Hey everyone and welcome! Today we are talking about dependency injection in C++, what it is, how to do it and why it actually matters in real world code bases. Let's start with the basics. Dependency injection or DI is a way to give an object the things it depends on, rather than having it create them itself. That's it. It's a simple idea, but it solves some really important problems in architectures, like tight coupling, hard to test code and hidden dependencies. Let's look at a small example. Imagine you have a class game that needs a renderer to draw graphics. You might write something like this. Seems fine, right? The problem is game is tightly coupled to renderer. You can't change the rendering behavior without modifying the game class. You can't substitute a mock renderer for testing. And you are managing memory manually. That's a red flag in modern C++. Now let's refactor this using dependency injection. Instead of creating the renderer inside game, we pass it in from the outside like this. Now the game class depends on a renderer, but it doesn't construct it. That responsibility has moved outside. That's dependency injection. So why is this better? First, we can now easily swap out the renderer. Maybe we have a console renderer or a null renderer for testing. And now we can do this. This means game is testable, it's flexible, and you've separated the concerns. Game runs the game, and someone else figures out what kind of rendering to use. Dependency injection supports something called inversion of control. Instead of high-level modules controlling the construction of their dependencies, the control is inverted. The configuration happens outside, often at program startup. That makes your components reusable and decoupled. Now, there are different ways to do dependency injection. What we just did, passing dependencies via the constructor is called constructor injection. It's the most common and usually the cleanest. There is also setter injection, where dependencies are passed in through a setter function after construction. Setter injection is useful if you want to change the dependency at runtime, but it comes with the risk that the object is only partially initialized after construction. So use it when the trade-off is worth it. There is also interface injection, where a dependency provides a method to inject itself. This is rare in C++ and mostly used in more dynamic languages. Now let's talk about manual versus framework based dependency injection. In languages like Java or C Sharp, there are full-blown dependency injection containers that automatically wire up your dependencies. In C++, we rarely need that. Manual dependency injection is usually enough, and it gives you more control over performance and memory. That said, you can write a lightweight factory or service locator in C++, if your project is large enough and you want to manage object lifetimes more dynamically. Let me show you a small example of building a factory function. Now, the creation logic is outside the game class. That keeps your business logic clean and focused. So to recap, dependency injection in C++ means passing an object's dependencies from the outside, instead of constructing them internally. This gives you better testability, lower coupling, clearer object lifetimes, easier to swap or extend components. And all of this adds up to more maintainable code, especially as your project grows. One common anti-pattern you will want to avoid is the hidden dependency. That's when a class depends on something, but doesn't say so in its constructor. For example, here game depends on the logger, but it doesn't say so. That makes the class harder to reason about and harder to test. A better design is to inject the logger, even if it's a singleton. Now everything game depends on is visible. Alright, that's a wrap on dependency injection in C++. It's not just a buzzword, it's a practical tool that leads to more modular, cleaner and testable code. If you want to see more real world patterns like this, hit like and subscribe. And please let me know in the comments which C++ pattern you want to see next. Catch you on the flippity flip!